streets in Spain, Portugal and Greece, protesting, often violently, at what is being done to them. And the recipe, we're told, is more of the same. More of the same. And indeed, I met the German Chancellor Angela Merkel about 18 months ago to talk about this. Now, it's a very odd thing, uh, but I find myself as one of the seven leaders of a group in the European Parliament. And this means they have to invite me to all the official functions. <laughs> which is something that I enjoy very much more than they do. <laughs> so I was at this lunch, and the German Chancellor was there, sitting across the table, and I can let you into a little secret about Angela Merkel, that in private, she's even more miserable than she looks in public. <laughs> And I said, Chancellor, wouldn't it be a liberation for the German taxpayer who's just spent 20 years paying for the reintegration of Eastern Germany back into Western Germany, wouldn't it be a liberation for them not to have to sign blank checks in perpetuity to the club med countries? Um, and, and, and really, wouldn't your own voters be happier with that situation? And wouldn't it for the Greeks be a chance of salvation to leave the euro to have a massive competitive devaluation, to write off much of, the, of, of, of their debt, to regain the democracy, and to try and trade their way back to profitability, much in the same way that Iceland has done since 2008. Oh no, Mr Farage, she said. Greece must not be allowed to leave the euro, because if Greece leaves the euro, other countries will leave too, and that will be the end of our European dream. Well... There is a bit of me that says I'll drink to that, I suppose. <laughs> but what she's really saying, and what Mr. Barroso is saying, and what Mr. Herman Van Rompuy, <laughs> I can never quite keep a straight face when I mention his name. <laughs> but what they're saying is, whatever the social cost, whatever the economic cost, we must continue with the project. And in maintaining this project, what they have done is they have literally stripped out all forms of democracy from those countries. Greece is now run by a troika. Representatives from the European Commission, the European Central Bank and the IMF, once a fortnight, fly into Athens airport, go and see the Greek Prime Minister and tell him what tax rates must be, what spending can be. All democracy is gone. In fact, it even got so bad that a couple of years ago, when the Greek Prime Minister suggested a referendum on staying in the Euro, within 48 hours, the bully boys of Brussels had removed him and replaced him with a puppet. And the same thing happened in Italy too. You know, what it, this is really very, very worrying. The economics isn't working, and therefore the logic is, let's destroy nation-state democracy, and let's place all the power that we can at the centre. Well, I think that is damn dangerous. Because surely the whole point about democracy is however much we may dislike the government that's in power, what we do is we battle for another party with a different manifesto to take over and institute new policies. It's called parliamentary democracy.